Seventh House District up in Southwest <coughs> County. I want to thank you for joining us today for brief remarks on the uh, recently reintroduced Ohio Health and Justice Act. For well over two years, we've been engaged in a deliberative process of receiving ideas and crafting this legislation, which will fundamentally reform adult protective services here in the state of Ohio. I'd like to highlight three of the most significant reforms in the areas of defining elder abuse, reporting elder abuse, and establishing in statute an elder abuse commission. First, we acknowledge that the state's current definitions pertaining to elder abuse are significantly outdated. When originally crafted, elder abuse statutes focused on physical abuse. However, in our society, we are increasingly seeing elderly individuals who are exploited financially. Among other changes to definitions in the Ohio Revised Code, our legislation will add and define financial harm to ensure our seniors' life savings and homes are protected. Second, we acknowledge the state lacks proper reporting requirements to accurately track elder abuse and identify patterns of abuse, as well as provide support to the individuals on the front lines who are charged with protecting our seniors. Our legislation will create a registry to help identify reported patterns of elder abuse. For the first time, Ohio will be able to accurately monitor and track the abuse of senior citizens. In addition, our legislation will provide a program of ongoing comprehensive training for protective service caseworkers. With this program, educational materials will be developed and made available to mandatory reporters. Third, we acknowledge the constraints of the Attorney General's Elder Abuse Commission, which was established in 2009. Our legislation will codify this entity making permanent in statute a statewide elder abuse commission. The new commission will increase awareness and research of elder abuse, work to improve public policy, funding and programming, and improve the judicial response to elder abuse victims. I want to thank uh, Representative Wes Rutherford, who's one of our new members here in the caucus, for joining me as my joint sponsor on this legislation, and Attorney General DeWine uh, for his long work on this issue and for his partnership over the last couple of years as we worked our way through the paces in developing this legislation. And at this point, for additional comments, I would turn the podium over to Representative Rutherford. Thank you. Representative Wes Rutherford from the 51st House District, located in Butler County, Southwest Ohio. Elder abuse is not something we hear about all, all that often. We never think it can happen to someone that we know. And the truth is, is elder abuse happens to anyone, family members, friends, Elder abuse can happen anywhere, next door, to your local nursing homes, hospitals, and the privacy of their own homes. Across the state, older Ohioans are being victimized for violence, manipulation, and fraud. And we don't hear about it too often. It's because victims of elder abuse are reluctant to report abuse. It can be due to fear of abuser or denial, and tragically, some victims are unable to speak out due to dementia or other physical impairments. It's not limited to physical violence. Elder abuse can be not only the physical some kind, but sexual abuse, emotional, psychological, financial, and ex financial exploitation, and abandonment. Older Americans are often fallen victim to financial uh, fraud schemes and investment schemes more and more these days. While there's no way of knowing, certain, knowing for certain exactly how many of our nation's elderly are being abused, recent studies show that approximately 11 percent of U.S. elders surveyed had experienced some type, of, some type of abuse or potential neglect. National Council on Aging estimates that 5 million older adults suffer abuse annually. The number is way too high. It was equally disturbing that according to the survey, state adult protective services in 2004 showed that 1 in 14 cases of elder abuse come to the attention of authorities. It's since been revised to 1 in 5. As we continue to care for the greatest nation and the baby boomer generation is getting ready to start turning 65, it's imperative that we promote awareness of elder abuse and establish safeguards to protect our loved ones. I believe House Bill 49, with the help of Representative Bieler and the Attorney General and interested parties that are going to help us out along the way, will take major steps in doing so. Uh, 